Hello, my name is Dr. Earl Nicholas Todd, or Dr. ENT. I am an otolaryngology head and neck surgeon. I will be reviewing scenes from a few different TV shows, including Limitless, Hannibal, and Grey's Anatomy, that contain ENT relevant materials. Let's first take a look at the scene from the TV show Limitless. Here we go. The main character swallows a special pill which is then shown being swallowed via an x-ray technique called fluoroscopy. As it pertains to swallow, the test is specifically called a modified barium swallow and is used to actually help evaluate patients who have trouble swallowing. The main problem with this particular scene is that when a pill is swallowed, one should only see the pill. The black material around the pill should not be present. Now that said, I suspect if the black material was not present, it would be much more difficult for the TV viewers to see the pill going down. As such, creative liberties were certainly taken here. In this scene from Hannibal, the vocal cords shown are totally accurate and is actually what one would see when using an endoscope. The error in this particular scene occurs as the viewpoint moves from the voice box and out the mouth. What is actually shown just before one sees the mouth is that the view goes into the back of the nose before it seamlessly merges into the mouth. Why does it do that? Because when endoscopy is performed to look at the vocal cords, we always go through the nose. I should also mention that the vocal cord movements do seem to sync up with the singing, but the breathing and heartbeat sounds typically are not heard so obviously. Wait, why were you rushing to the ER? Oh, because the fish. There's a fish inside of there. What, like, like part of a fish or bone or? No, entire fish, sir. Interesting. If the character swallowed an entire fish, but it got stuck in his throat in the region known as the upper esophageal sphincter, it certainly is possible he may have trouble talking. And the unusual breathing sounds he is making is certainly plausible as well, as the airway may be partially obstructed. What happened exactly? The bar had an aquarium. All right, so we winded down Chuck's bachelor party. You know what I'm saying? This is bachelor party. So we start daring each other to swallow fish from the aquarium. You know how it is, end of the night? Yeah. No. Okay. I honestly worry for your entire gender sometimes. Anyway, he grabbed the biggest one. We didn't think he was gonna do it. We like, he ain't about to do it. He guffs the whole damn fish, and I guess the fish didn't like that. So the fish start fighting back, start slapping. Just start going crazy. It goes in deeper, deeper. We tried to pull it out, it would not come out. And then it kind of puffed up. That doesn't sound like a goldfish. Yeah, no, and according to this x-ray, this thing's got spikes. Mm. And then I got scared because I thought he was gonna choke our pew. Or that the fish could be poisonous. I didn't even think of that. It now becomes apparent why the patient is having troubles talking. The spikes have probably impaled the muscles of the voice box preventing the vocal cord movement, thereby resulting in a functional vocal cord paralysis. The main concern I have medically beyond the stuck fish is the potential traumatic swelling that may eventually result in airway obstruction. Also, you have got to be worried about infection as the mucosa is certainly punctured if not torn. If torn, the patient also has an esophageal perforation which can lead to severe infection not just in the throat region, but also around the heart as well as lungs. Craziest, dumbest thing a person can do. The ER is just like, hold my beer. Maybe he has... It's fortunate they were able to intubate the patient. If not, an emergency tracheostomy would have to be performed. Also, a scope was used to retrieve the fish, which is not wrong, but it would not be the easiest method. An easier and better method would be to widely open the throats using a laryngoscope like a weirdo or a dito. Rigid instrumentation would then be used to retrieve the fish. As anybody who works with fish or likes to fish knows, the fish scales are oriented in such a way that pulling a fish backwards would result in the scales catching on whatever is touching it like barbs. This would make retrieval not only more difficult, but would also result in further mucosal lacerations during the removal process. Indeed, removal will probably result in way more damage than when the fish got stuck during swallow. I managed to remove all the spines. You're likely going to experience some discomfort on your throat for the next few days. And your hand is repaired, uh, but I need to have you follow up with me in a couple of weeks. Hey, so you guys, uh, you guys are smart, you doctors, right? The patient unrealistically looks and talks way better than he should immediately after surgery. 
Realistically, he would have been kept intubated for a prolonged period of time, probably a few days to allow any swelling to resolve, but also to limit any soiling to the damaged mucosa. I probably would have a feeding tube surgically placed through the abdominal wall as the patient would be kept NPO for days, if not weeks, to minimize infection given likely presence of an esophageal perforation. Regarding his voice, I would have expected it to be extremely hoarse. But um, more, more importantly, uh, how, how are you doing? Oh, I just had a little bump on my tongue removed is all. A couple of taste buds. Turns out it was a little touch of cancer, so I'm here to have the rest out. I mean, you know the cancer, not the taste buds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know exactly how bad it is because Dr. Sloan over there has been awfully quiet. Because you don't let him get a word in edgewise is why. <laughs> uh, how is she, Dr. Sloan? Uh, we just got back to pathology of poor Connie. Unfortunately, the cancer is a bit more widespread than we'd hoped. It's over 60% of your tongue. The patient apparently has been diagnosed with tongue cancer, the most common type being squamous cell carcinoma. Although you can diagnose tongue cancer with a biopsy, you cannot determine the cancers involving 60% of the tongue with a biopsy alone. The cancer size and involvement can only be determined based on an exam and imaging studies like a CT, MRI, or PET scan. Also, if 60% of the patient's tongue is truly cancerous, she would often be in a lot of pain as well as having trouble talking either due to large tumor involvement or nerve invasion resulting in tongue paralysis. Trouble swallowing is also common. Well, what, what does she do, chemo? I think the uh, best bet is a microvascular free flap, Dr. Gray. Uh, he'll remove the cancerous part of the tongue and then reconstruct it with a strip of flesh from your legs. George? Uh, the extra flesh will provide the bulk your tongue needs to breathe properly, chew, swallow, and talk. Dr. Sloan, I'll be able to talk, won't I? You will be able to talk, Connie. I just don't know how well you'll be understood. The information provided in this scene is spot on. A free flap is when soft tissue like skin and muscle is moved from one part of the body to another and the blood vessels have to be reattached. What is not mentioned is that there are other options including a pedicled rotation flap from the chest, head or neck in which the blood vessels integrity is kept intact rather than a free flap far from the surgical site. Also, radiation and chemotherapy is certainly an option as well. With surgical excision, a neck dissection would also be performed to remove all of the lymph nodes in the neck due to possible metastases. Regardless of treatment, having a tracheostomy and feeding tube placed is common as there is always some degree of post-operative swelling resulting in possible airway obstruction and the patient will need to relearn to swallow and as such will need nutritional support during the recovery period. That's a perfect fit. It's got good vascularization. At this rate, you may actually get to go on a date with Adele. Yeah, I better. Can't very well have her take me back if I cancel our first date. Where are you taking her, Chief? Uh, there's a nice little Chinese restaurant we like to go to. Hmm. What happens next? Um, Dr. Sloan, I, I know. Is everything okay? Um, <coughs> we're not sure. What does that mean? It means we've never done this before. It is hard to say exactly what the problem is that the surgical team encountered. I suspect that they were hoping to preserve the nerve controlling the tongue's movement, but that the nerve was involved with cancer and as such would need to be sacrificed. This would adversely affect speech and talking is what the patient most desired preserved. What about if we call out the lingual nerve underneath here? No, we'd end up losing the vascular supply. Graph might not work at all. She likes to talk so She likes to talk a lot. We need an extra set of hands. Someone who knows nerves. Old Mally, get Dr. Shaw. Yes, sir. Functional muscle transfer of the tongue. That was looking good for a while, but... <sighs> I'll be right there. Yeah. Here they are talking about ways to salvage nerve function to the tongue, which I honestly can't say is able to be possible, especially if more than 60% of the tongue is removed. Of course, Dr. Shepard is consulted who understandably is less than pleased with the idea of preserving nerve function with a free flap. That's because it realistically is not possible, even if you grafted a new nerve. 
At best, you may be able to restore a marginal partial movement after a one year, but it will never be totally normal. Speech will certainly be of poor quality, and being able to swallow without aspirating will be possible after a long period of recovery and therapy. I think that woman's going to be able to talk for the rest of her life thanks to us. I think I still got it. I think you do too. Not sure why the original two surgeons are congratulating themselves when Dr. Shepard is the one who actually saved the day, though I personally am not quite sure how. Painful. After surgery, the patient normally would be in the intensive care unit breathing through a trach. In this scene, her face looks swollen, but in reality, the swelling would actually be even worse. Overall, the actors and producers did a great job recreating medical problems encountered in the ENT clinic. Certain facts and situations stretched belief and others were just completely wrong. But in spite of these misses, it is still entertaining to watch.